Hey, y'all. Hey, welcome to Power Women Podcast. This is the show where powerful women share their journeys. I'm your host, Power Mom, Claire Brown. Hey, y'all. Hey, we have a very, very unique person to chat with today because I am so excited to open this conversation. I think so many of the events from uh, this past year, the past two years, and really just as a country, um, have built up to conversations like today with Esperanza Masana Crane. Good job. Did I get yes. that right? Yeah. You did. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And so, Esperanza, you um, tell us what your title is. So, yeah, because absolutely. it's very long, it's a mouthful, and I want to make sure we get it all in there. It unfortunately is a mouthful and I work for a place that also is a mouthful, but I work for the Arkansas Economic Development Commission, ADC, and um, I am the director of the Minority and Women-Owned Business Division at ADC. I just started this job literally about a month ago, uh, but I have been with ADC for seven years now. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I am so grateful that, um, you know, we have a close connection and a friend, a mutual friend who connected us because I didn't know this existed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't think a lot, I I don't think I'm alone in that. I think that there are a lot of people that don't know about this position, about this development, about, you know, the work that's being done in this space um, Mm -hmm. and that there is an Esperanza and that we all need to hear from. So I'm really excited to dive into what you do um, and the needs and the development that's going on in this, this area. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me tell you a little bit about ADC to begin with. Um, we are a, a state organization. We are the economic development arm for the state, basically. And so everything economic development related to the state, it's, it's run by us. And then we, we belong to now what is the Department of Commerce, there was a consolidation of state government uh, at the end of 2019. And so several state agencies were basically combined uh, under the umbrella of of different departments. So we are part of the Department of Commerce along with uh, Department of Workforce Services, Insurance and several others. And and so we're we're part of of Department of Commerce. And that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what you do, and and please correct me if I'm wrong, because that happens quite a bit. But you um, promote and um, aid and help um, minorities and women-owned businesses across our state to, that, mm-hmm. yeah, to get up and going. And then you give them tools. Um, you, you even give them financing. I mean, you do anything and everything to help them get off the ground, to flourish, to grow, um, and, and help that part of the economy in our state. Yes, and uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because there is, um, I'd like to clarify too that we don't necessarily work with um, with startups per se, but we we are the division that helps by providing tools and resources to women and minority-owned businesses. So for example, there, there, and there's several, several resources, amazing resources and, and professionals in the state that do so much for women and minority-owned businesses. We happen to be one of them. Um, And one of my goals in this division is to try to bring all of these fantastic partners together um, and and help our our community. Because there's so many, just like nonprofits, you know, there's so many nonprofits that do so much, you know, and do great things. And and so many do food, you know, help with food or clothing, you know, and same same as is is the case for us. but yes, we and 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 we have two programs that we offer that are part of the division. But aside of that, we do a lot of um, assistance and help with men, overall women and minority-owned businesses. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, do you host? So, give us examples and tell us of the different programs. So, I mean, are there workshops? Are there grants? I mean, what is available? Where do we go? Yeah. Absolutely. So you can find us at um, our web on our website, which is uh, www.arkansasedc.com. And there is a tab for women and minority owned businesses. I will tell you about two programs that we have. One is our certification program. 
And when you have been in business for two years, you can be part of this program. We have workshops that explain and, and hold your hand basically through the application process. Becoming certified means that the state will say you are a women or minority owned business and you're certified by the state. And how that helps is that when you're trying to do business with state government or federal government, you have this accreditation, if you will, by the state of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Um, The state of Arkansas is encouraged to spend 15% on women and minority owned businesses and service disabled veterans. So so that's important to know. And, uh, you know, we work closely also with the Office of State Procurement uh, on, on keeping up with those numbers as well. So you can get certified if you have been in business for two years and there's a number of 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 requisites um but that allows you to to be active and also we notify our certified groups of bidding opportunities Mm -hmm. so if we get for instance a notification from um you know recently we're working with central arkansas water and they and they have uh, they have a new procurement portal that they're launching so we will notify certificate uh our certification group Um, So they have access to that. When we have special workshops, you know, they have access to that as well. Um, We have a signature event that is called the matchmaking event, and we try to do it once a year. Mm -hmm. And it's an event where we try to partner um, buyers with sellers. And for the most part is, is, uh, you know, uh, buyers from state government. And so uh, businesses that are interested can be matched and have like a 15 minute opportunity to network and, and meet all these, all these, uh, all these buyers. And so it creates a good networking opportunity in the state. Um, our second program is the low mobilization program. And this one has been temporarily stopped, but we're getting ready to revamp it this year. Um, this is basically a loan guarantee. So if you're a business and, and that's one of the challenging factors for women and minority owned businesses, the access to capital is, is not, is a challenge. And that is recurring, you know, uh, that's nothing new. You see it on studies and, you know, there's so much conversation about that. So um, we can work with the businesses bank and and they get a loan with the bank and then we guarantee up to 90% of the loan. Oh, wow. Yes. And, and so in addition to that, I know several businesses are always looking for funding options and opportunities. So we can be a resource as far as connecting them to uh, organizations that may be able to help them. But in terms of financing, that is our program where we can we can assist. Mm-hmm. Now, and so are there any, I mean, do you do this for any and all types of businesses or is it just one specific type, you know, a specific space, a specific area? Um, or is it, you know, the woman that wants to go out and start a scrapbooking company, um, is, is she the one that calls you or is it just the, uh, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, when you talk about contracts with the state, I'm thinking, well, you know, the, 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 the minority that may go out and start something with a water purification system, Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, what, is it specifically, um, a different, is, are there, is it limited to different types? No, no. Well, the legislature doesn't specify, um, you know, in, in some other categories for state government, there are, you know, specifications, but for this, no, it, it's, uh, it's more specified on, in terms of being a woman or a minority owned business or service disabled veteran, okay. um, which is defined by, you know, your, your business has to be run and operated 51% by by woman oh wow so even mm-hmm. okay so that gives me more questions so mm-hmm. even the man that owns a company even the white male that owns a company but more than 50 percent of his employees are women would qualify no no the not employees it's the that own that are companies that are owned and are operated by women so if you have you know you have situations where yes they're own in terms of ownership say there could be men, but it has right. to be at least fifty-one percent. Okay, women. got it. Mm-hmm. So if there's three owners of a company and two of them are women and one of them Correct. is a white male, then it mm-hmm. still qualifies. Got it. 
Correct. That's fascinating. Um, and so, you know, there's obviously the loan assistance. Um, you mentioned workshops. There's mm-hmm. the, um, you know, the accreditation program that you have. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. also funnels opportunities for bidding and job opportunities and um, contracts and things like that. Yes. Um, and so how long has all this been around in our state? Well, this division start. Well, I am I am replacing my predecessor was here since two thousand seven, um, so she had been here for a while and she had worked for AEDC for uh, she had been in state government for forty five years, mm-hmm. so quite a long time. But she was in this division um, before that. Excuse me about that. Um, and so the program. That's a good question. I don't know how long the division has been at AEDC. I wouldn't say it hasn't been that long, but at least for sure since 2000, since 2000, I believe. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, what are some of the statistics? Like I know you and I chatted a bit before, yeah. like how many minority owned businesses are there in our state comparative to how many, you know, business yeah. period are there in our state? What is the percentage so, of you know, businesses wonder- that are minority owned? Yes. So I, I want to tell you, we have a really good tool um, in our website. We have a directory. I'm going to make like a, a little side note. In this directory, women and minority owned businesses can sign up to be part of the directory. doesn't mean that you're certified. You don't have to provide any documentation or anything. It's just to say, hey, I'm a woman or minority owned business. And so, for example, if you are looking for a particular, um, say you're looking, oh, I want to look for some... A, pet services company that is owned by women and minorities or service disabled veteran. I'm going to look it up on the directory. You have access to that. Okay. You know, if you, and so that is interesting to know. So for example, based on the directory, we have 79% of the businesses in the directory are African-American, mm-hmm. um, 8% are Hispanic American, uh, 3% are American Indian and 7% are Asian American. Mm-hmm based on our directory. Um, In terms of nationwide statistics, one of the interesting facts is like in terms of women-owned businesses, the growth for women has been 21% for business owners. Mm -hmm. Um, The the revenue growth is 21%. And from those, 50% are are represented by women of color. So from women-owned businesses. Um, Yes. And so the breakdown is very similar kind of to what we have with our directory too, where 21% are African-American, 18% Hispanic, 9% Asian American. But what's interesting to me is that um, the earned average revenue. So among all women-owned businesses is about $142,000. But then when you go and look into ethnicity, so African-Americans, earned average revenue was 24,000. For Hispanics, it was 50,900. For Asian Americans, 191,200. But this is, and keep in mind, this is uh, statistics for for the US. So, um, you know, the message here is that closing that revenue gap for women-owned businesses, in particular uh, for women of color, Mm -hmm. would definitely have a huge impact Mm -hmm. um, on our economy. And, empowering these businesses would obviously fuel more jobs, more job creation, and would bring more revenue to our economy, which is something that we need. So, you know, that is when we say support women and minority-owned businesses in the state, it's not just, you know, we think here Central Arkansas, but in in all areas of the state, we're helping them create jobs. We're helping them um, fuel our economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, you know, what is it that is most needed in order to bridge that gap, that wage gap, if you will? Because I've, I've studied a lot of this with women mm-hmm. and so much of it, a lot of times is uh, we don't, we don't know the worth. Um, we don't, we don't, yes. charge, we don't charge the rate that's necessary. Um, yeah. and I, I have no doubt that that, that doesn't discriminate that, <laughs> that has nothing to do with ethnicity. That's just part Amen. of the programming of being a woman. Um, and so I'm, I'm certain that part of it is that. Um, and then I, I would, I, I'm wondering also, uh, you know, what is, what are the education 
um, levels and, you know, the certifications and all the different things. And what does that look like? And so how much of this is an education gap um, to where then that also just builds confidence for you to build more as well? Um, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. And an interesting fact that I found in the research is that women are more, more likely to be sidepreneurs, which basically means that you have a side job or your side business. Yeah. And so it's, um, you still keep your full-time job. And so obviously growing your business is a priority, mm -hmm. but it, on top of that, you have to add the, um, keeping up with the family, keeping up with children. And that was another interesting factor that I found in the research that we need to work around creating opportunities for women and legislation that may enable women to have a little more freedom. So for instance, um, child services or be, or having flexi more flexibility to work from home and these things, empowering women to do a little more, um, because think about it. It's, it, I mean, then obviously for a man is it's, they just run and they go and sure they have their family to take care of. But well, that's always but been the expectation. Exactly. Well, and the woman has a thousand tabs open all the time, you know, so that plays also into operating your business. You know, you're just not only operating your business, but you're keeping up with your daytime job, you know, and who knows what other responsibilities you have, not to mention that you're care. I mean, there, we are caretakers, not only of your children, but probably of your parents or, or, or other relatives. Right. It's the nurturing aspect of femininity. Um, and so, um, I think you're, we're, we're starting to touch on something that also doesn't discriminate and it mm -hmm. is the daily, weekly, uh, struggle of woman guilt of juggling all the crystal balls and trying to learn the line of balance. But I love the term that you used and it's not a new term, um, but side hustle to create that sidepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so then I think how many of these women in minority owned businesses are really sidepreneurs mm -hmm. that are, the goal is to eventually become a full-time entrepreneur and have that become your main source of income. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and in order for that to happen, there has to be some scaling within the business yeah. and, and taking that leap would would not only include, so then you play the factor of, of planning and then obviously financing would have to come into play because you're growing from, you know, making uh, the, whatever you're, you're making, you know, at home or, or you're doing it on, at a kitchen, for instance, my sister owns a, a side business and it's, it's called Bella's Kitchen mm -hmm. and it's a meal delivery service for, for children and now families. Well, she loves to cook and that's what fueled that. And then she has a two-year-old. So um, starting her on solids was part of the idea, you know, merging her passion with her, with the love of her baby and um, cooking. And so, you know, for her to scale the business obviously would involve, okay, we're going to go from X number of orders a month to so many more of, uh, a month, then you're going to need to have, financing involved to to help support that and so that's right. when that's when it gets tricky I think and then it, obviously does. it does and so I think you know because in in the meantime I think that we do not uh think outside the box of how to leverage all the other things in our lives mm -hmm. um, and then when we feel guilty when we do leverage it and in reality you gotta let that go um you know we I agree. We have a very, uh, we're burnt out. Um, the, the society of the U S is one where the woman, not only the woman, but parents are burnt out because it's really hard to rely on help. Um, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, you don't have, some people don't have the luxury of having family around, you know, I, yeah. I, I grew up with my grandparents. I grew up in El Salvador. I grew up with, and I had my aunt while my mom was working. And so it was like such yeah. a community and, um, my aunt would help pick us up and while my mom worked. And so it's, it's really difficult. It's, you have to do so much, everything. And the guilt 
the guilt is so real, whether you're a stay home mom or whether you're a working mom. Yeah. It just, it's, it's a terrible thing. But well, and the way that I have, you know, I, I have people ask me all the time. I had a, an interviewee ask me the other day, how do you do it being a single mother? Because my world is very similar. Um, my parents, uh, one works, you know, well, they both work full time and, and they don't live in the same county that I'm in. And, you know, it's, it's not, it's not easy. And so, uh, you know, it's just me full time alone at it for the most part. And I recognized that lack, but I also refused to rest in an excuse. Mm-hmm. And I think we fall into that crutch too much of, I'm not going to be able to succeed. I can't do this full time. I can't, I can't, I can't because I'm needed here. Um, and we limit ourselves in that way. Um, and so I chose to um, create Uh, women around me of strength who now are very much my family Um, and we leverage one another we carpool one another we bring meals to one another we pick up our children and we you know I can't do this today can someone please step in here you know and it's it's an amazing tribe that we have to do and I really feel that for women to rise that's the way it has to be we have to choose to step in there for one another um, because that's the way the modern family truly is. Um, And then in regards to the guilt, you have to open that conversation with your children Mm -hmm. and then ask them the questions. Why do I do this? Do you know why I do this? And then have them tied to the outcome. Yeah, I do all this so that we can go on this vacation. I do all this Mm -hmm. so can live here do you enjoy mac and cheese (laughs) good (laughs) because I can't buy it if we don't do this you know that type thing because if everybody is not in the team and not tied to the outcome then yeah you're going to carry that guilt forever Um, Mm -hmm. but you can let it go if you open the conversation and everybody knows the why behind it um no, you, you've nailed it. My, my mom was a single mother of three children. I'm the oldest. Mm-hmm. And, um, she worked full time, uh, at the, it, it was also a state job and she, she's an electrical engineer. And when I was six or seven years old, she started her a side business. Uh, and it was a wholesale distributor of, um, this brand of bread that did breads and cookies and cakes and things of that nature. Um, well, she grew it to where it became a little gift shop now and diner. And, you Mm -hmm. know, this is years later. And while she kept her other job full-time and she had us, and I know that sometimes for, you know, for her, it's like, I feel like I didn't enjoy you guys. I'm like, mom, we did, you know, because in my eyes, I didn't see it at all. Like, Oh, my mom did all this working. I mean, I admire that, but I enjoy the times every moment that I had with my mom, you know, and like you said, it's a modern family. So you, I always say I've been raised by three women, my mom, my grandmother, my aunt. And, and that gives you more perspective and, and, and brings you around as a, as a person. So I, I am so happy that she did that. And I was happy because I saw her doing that. And I saw her being happy and that made me happy. So it never, not not for one bit did I think oh man I wish my mom you know could not do all of that on the contrary I'm like good for you go for it you know Mm -hmm. yeah it's a constant conversation yes and so if if you ignore it and don't open the conversation then yeah you're going to make up stories and have all kinds of guilt all the time Mm -hmm. Um, absolutely you you open the conversation and everybody's in the team effort for it then it's a team effort and it's wonderful um, but, and that's how we have to move the pendulum. And, you know, I think the pandemic also has helped uh, shed a perspective and a light on 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 shifting the gears a little bit mm-hmm. and for working parents also to prioritize and understand and, and manage things differently. And, and so for employers, I think also um, it, it has allowed them to to see that, hey, the it's OK to have a little flexibility. You know, I mean, the work will will get done. And sometimes your employees are even more productive. Yeah, I you think know. I think the uh, the virtual work environment has helped quite a bit with that, with employers and employees. Uh, the studies have definitely shown that uh, the pandemic has made the household balance still fall on the majority of women. 
um, that it has not aided in that leverage. Um, that is true. Actually, yeah, that it is actually more burdensome for women since pandemic, actually. So, which is disheartening. Um, and the burnout is now even more real than it was before. But what I do know for sure is that every every season of, of parenthood is different. Mm-hmm. And when they're little and they're so needy, uh, the trenches are really hard. <laughs> and, but then um, when they become teenagers, it's like, oh, God, this is the time where I can really screw up. You know, when, when they're little, all I had to worry about was keeping them alive, you know, yes. this is the time that's really damaging, you know, so it's a, a different kind of stress. So I, I was an older mom. I had my son when I was 38 or 39, can remember. And trust me, I was very naive in the fact that I thought, oh, you know, they just sleep in their cribs. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. when I, I mean, that all the lack of sleep hit me hard. I mean, it was, that was a rough awakening, Yeah, yeah. but, exactly. but you know, the, the good thing is, and like you said, the, this network of women and your friends, you realize we all are on the same boat, you know, yes. we all, it's, it's just because someone looks like they're having it easier. Mm-mm. They still have to go and clean the kitchen and it's like, it's, or, you know, and do laundry. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. And so we're all in this together and that's it. You know, I feel that the 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 ability that we have to have access to social media, to blogs, to podcasts like yours, it provides that connectivity factor to that allows us to better understand where we are, you know, compared to being a mom 20 years ago, you know, when you may have felt very lonely and isolated in, in the way that that you felt about things and career and, and all of that. And so hopefully this is, you know, this, this, this also helps, you know, is helpful for business owners and people that are thinking about starting their business. Well, Esperanza, you are a joy and no, I love you. the work that you're doing uh, for minorities and for women across our state. It is so needed. Um, and I think, I don't, I don't know that any of us actually truly recognize the depth of the economic impact that women and minorities make and will continue to make in our state and in our country. And I am so excited to see you on the cusp of moving that pendulum for all of us. And so can you please tell us again how others can find you so that they can figure out how they can um, catapult their businesses um, to the next level or launch it? Absolutely. Um, If you go to our website, which is Arkansas, all spelled out, E-D-C, as Economic Development Commission, ArkansasEDC.com. Um, and there's a tab for minority and women-owned business, or you can just search for my name. Uh, you can you can find my contact and feel free to email me or call me at any time. Um, like I said, I, I started a month ago and I have a, a number of initiatives that I want to start launching. And so hopefully the conversation, if we have one next year, it'll be a little bit different where I can I can tell you, hey, this is this is where we are and this is what we're doing. And, and this is a message for statewide. You know, we represent the entire state. We, we uh, work with many different partners and um, we will be happy to assist in any way. Perfect. Thank you so much for all you do. Oh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You bet. Have a great day. You too. Thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, please rate and review us on iTunes and follow us on Twitter at Claire Power Mom.